And to our internet listeners, again, we are just grateful and thankful that you join us each time. And we want to remind you, if you haven't already, go down and subscribe. So when this cast come up, you'll be notified. That way you won't miss us. And we continue to encourage you to share with your friends, your families, your Sunday school classes that we are here. So they too can come aboard and be blessed by the Word of God here at World Class Sunday School. Oh, somebody tell me what's wrong with the people today. Oh, somebody tell me what's wrong with the people today. Oh, somebody tell me what's wrong. We welcome you to World Class Sunday School. We just thank God that he's given us another chance to look into his word. And we're just blessed when we have take advantage of, of this opportunity. Let us go in prayer. Lord, again, we thank you for this time to share in your word. We, we thank you that your word is rich. And thank you for another opportunity to explore to see the things that you have in store for us, the things that you want us to uh, know and to do. We love you, we praise you, we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Amen. We are currently in our winter quarter where we are talking about honoring God and here in our third unit uh, uh, we're looking at Jesus teaches about true worship. And today's uh, lesson is entitled, God Honoring Piety. And the, the word uh, piety is usually defined as uh, religious devotion and reverence to God. And uh, when we refer uh, here, we refer to, to it as one being pious. Uh, we, and when we talk about piety, we're talking about uh, a, a person who's pure in heart. And today's lesson is, is coming from Matthew, the sixth chapter. We're going to look at a portion of the Sermon on the Mount, one of two uh, uh, discourses in, in the book of Matthew's. And here, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to look at two outlines here in our lesson. The first outline, we're going to talk about, it's on giving. And it's coming from Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. And then the second one is on prayer. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses uh, five through eight. This uh, sermon or the teachings of Jesus Christ, as he as he gives this these instructions, uh, really aimed toward those who were following Christ, who was kingdom minded, and uh, the Sermon on the Mount we find it in Matthew's, the it's going to be the fifth through the seventh chapter. And uh, we, today we're going to talk about these two works, uh, which is prayer uh, and giving. And uh, we're going to start here in verse in the in the first outline. We're going to start here at verse and read verses one through four. And it it says, "Take heed that you do not your arms before men." to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may, be, that they may have glory of man. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. In verse uh, 3, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret 
himself shall reward thee openly. Okay, so so giving alms uh, here is really talking about uh, helping others that, that are in need. And alms, uh, uh, here when we look at, at uh, we're going to look at giving and, and praying. And these are two works. You no, know, now we're not, we're not saved by our works because we can read it, it Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, uh, and it says there that by, uh, by grace we are saved through our belief in Jesus Christ. And it is, it's not what we do that save us. It's what, when we believe in Christ. But that uh, scripture goes on to tell us that once we believe in Christ, then there are, are things that we, we are commanded to do as Christians. And those are our works. Now, works are important. Works does not save us, but works are important to us uh, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And here, we, when we look at giving, uh, helping those in need, that's, that's one of the works. And so, uh, this uh, principle of, it talks about, here it says, take heed that ye do not arm before men. And when you, when you are, are helping others, it says, don't, to, to, it said, don't give it to be seen of men, otherwise you have your reward from your Father in heaven. And this was uh, directed to those who were giving to lift themselves up. Uh, they weren't giving out of a pure heart. And just, uh, just want to remind us of the 13th chapter in Romans where, I mean, in, in our first Corinthians where Paul, Paul talks about what we do should be done uh, out of love. And whenever we do anything that should be done out of love, if it's not, then it's all for naught. And so here, uh, this, these verses are really directed to uh, hypocrites. And it, say, it says that uh, here that they, they should not do arms or they should not help others in order to bring attention to themselves. And when, when we do something for uh, the glory of man or a pat on the back, it's telling us that when we do that, then when we get the pat on the back, then we have our reward. But if we do it from, from the love of, of, because we love one another and because our, uh, we have a pure heart that our motive is right, when we do it that way, then God re will reward us. Uh, it, it talks about it here. It says, therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound the trumpet. Now that has reference to calling attention to yourself. And it says, uh, this is, he, uh, Christ is giving an example of how the hypocrites are, are, are doing in the streets. And uh, they are doing it for the glory of man. And that, that, that's their motive. Their motive is to be seen of man, to get man's glory. And it says when, when we do it that way, it's for the wrong motive. And, and when we do it for a pat on the back, when we get the pat, then we have our reward. Here, here Christ is exposing the hypocrites, namely the scribes and Pharisees, uh, who were pretending to be religious or pious when their hearts were really really full, full of evil. And uh, the, word, the word hypocrite here means to pretend to be someone you're not. Hi hypocrite in the Greek, a hypocrite in this context was an actor 
who would play a role and pretend to, uh, on stage to be a character created by a writer. And they would, they would wear a mask to uh, project uh, the character they were playing. And so, but, but here the hip word hypocrite in this context uh, is talking about uh, the religious performance of those whose heart was not right with Christ. And, and uh, uh, here, uh, they, uh, they would hide their, their pastness. Uh, the, the, they would pretend to be pious to hide their evil hearts is, is really what, what it was talking about. Okay, and then it goes on to say that uh, uh, comparing or uh, contrasting the hypocrite with a uh, true worshiper. Said, but when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. And this, this will ensure motives that are centered on concerns for others, not that of, of getting attention for ourselves. And uh, when, when, we, when we help those who are in need, we should keep it private. Uh, do, do it because it's good work. And God, God honors good work. And not to get uh, pats on the back. And verse 4 said, That thine arm may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. God sees all. God knows all. E even our motives for what we do, God knows uh, wh why we do what we do. And he will reward us accordingly. If our heart is not right, then God is going to know it. But if, we, if we're doing things, if we're helping others out of love and concern for them and not to get attention for ourselves, God knows that also. Uh, and here we t talking about when we talk about giving, when we give to call attention to ourselves, that's the wrong motive. We rob ourselves of of the blessing. God God is going to bless us when we have the right motive. But when we have the wrong motive, we rob ourselves of the blessing, and we rob God of His glory. And you know what happens to 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 uh, people when they uh, steal God's glory. We know what happened to Lucifer when he tried to steal God's glory. He was uh, kicked out of heaven. And so we know that God is not pleased when we, when we try to get the glory that he deserved. And not only does it rob our, us of our blessings and rob God of his, of his glory, uh, but he, uh, even though the gift might help, help the needy, uh, it's not, it's the wrong motive. And, but when we do it with the right motive, when we give out of love, now that's the, that's the right motive, that pleases God. When we do that, it will, it will grow, we will grow spiritually, and God will get the glory, and others will be helped. So, so you know, it's not wrong to give openly, and we must do it with the right motives in the right manner. When we, when we please God, it does not matter who else we displease. But, but if we go about trying to please man, then we, we are displeasing to God. We want to be God pleasers, not, not man pleasers. So we want our motives to be pure, and we, we want to do things from a, 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 pure, a, a pure heart, out of love. And we are to give when we see the need and realize we can help, not for recognition or pride, but that, that we might help someone. Okay, and then, and then it goes on to talk about, it says that thine arm may be in secret, and thy father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. And, and we, we talked about God knowing everything, and God knows our motives for giving. And uh, Jesus was condemning uh, uh, the, uh, those who were hypocrites, who were 
doing things to get glory for themselves. Okay, so so we this this uh, portion on on giving uh, Matthew's six one through four. Let's look at the second outline. It's on prayer. Now, and again, these two works that we're talking about, giving and prayer, they, it's important. It's not. Uh, we, we're not saved by the work that we do, but once we are saved, then we are commanded to do the work of the ministry, and, and that's what we're looking at here. Okay, let's move on, uh, and we're going to look at uh, on prayer, verses 5 through 8. Uh, verse 5 reads, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in, uh, on the street corners uh, and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when thou pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Verse 8. Be, uh, be not yet therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth the things ye have need of before you ask, ask him. Okay, here we talked about we talked about uh, giving alms, and now we're going to talk about uh, prayer. Okay, here in verse five, Jesus was not condemning. He, he says, "And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street." He's not. Jesus is not condemning the posture of prayer or, or the act of prayer because it's right to pray. And the, and the scripture teaches us that we should always pray. And, but here Jesus is, ta is uh, condemning those who are praying to be seen by others. And then uh, he says, they, uh, they stand and they pray in the synagogues and on the corners of the street that they may be seen of man. And, and again, the, the motive for prayer, for praying here, is to be seen by man. And it says, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So, so when you pray uh, with the wrong motive, then uh, God is not going to honor that. God, God is not going to honor when, when a person prays in order to draw attention to themselves. And uh, it, it, go, it talks about uh, we're not to, to do things to be seen or honored by man. We're to, we're to do things to be seen and, 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 and honored by God. We want God's glory to honor the things that we do instead of man. And so, so, so here he talks about the hypocrite, those who are pretending to be pious and religious, praying so that others would see them praying. And then he contrasts with those who, are, who have the right motive in verse 6. It says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Okay, now this closet that, that, that's here is a private, private place to pray. And he said, uh, when, when, you, when you go into your closet and shut the door, no one can see you but God. So, so the, you could see that the motive here, when we pray in, in private or in secret, we know that the motive is not to be seen of man. And we need to make sure that when we pray, whether it's public 
or private that that our aim is to communicate with God. That's prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. And and when when a person goes into a private pr place to pr pray, uh, then that, that that means that they are. Their aim is to communicate with God. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And the father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. The only, uh, the only purpose of, of such a prayer is the true one, is to commune with God. When we do it, when we do it in the way God has said we should, then that's, that's the right way. Uh, and so, you know, prayer, like I said, is communicating with God. It, it doesn't have to be uh, eloquent, you know, choice words. We just want to connect with God and uh, share with God what, what, our, what our petition is. And when we do that, we, we'll do it the right way. God will hear and answer our prayers. And, and so uh, when... Uh, when we are sincere in our prayers to God, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. We, you know, do you know that we have an advocate with the Father in the person of Jesus Christ? And when, when, we, when we go to God in prayer, and when we are sincere about it, not only does we have the Holy Spirit interpreting our prayer to God. We have Jesus Christ, our advocate, sitting at the right hand of God, making sure that our petition is known to God. And so, so but when, we, when, when it's done uh, uh, in a hypocritical way, when it's done to be seen of men, then there's no communication with God. And, and it, it, go, it says, Said when we pray, when we shut our door and pray to God in secret, God who see it in secret will reward the openly. And and uh, Jesus is not condemning public prayer, uh, but He's condemning the motive of the hypocrite, the, the person who who prays to be seen of men. And look, God's rewards for what we do are greater than man's reward. Our, our man can only uh, praise you for, for a while. And, but God, God's rewards are greater than man's reward. And we shouldn't do anything for the glory and, and the praise of men because it's, it's really hollow. But we want, we want God to be pleased in all that we do. And so that's why we should make sure we have the right motive when, when we pray, whether it's in private or whether, whether it's in public. And then it goes on to talk about, uh, it says, uh, verse 7 and 8 talks about many words are few said, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. Now, vain repetition here represents empty words. Uh, actually, it was babbling, just, just going on and on. It, uh, for they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking. But it's not, it's not the, the words, or whether it's many or few, it's the condition of our hearts. Are we connected? with God. And look, there's nothing wrong and in, in, uh, Jesus is not here, is not condemning uh, persistent prayer. It's nothing wrong with praying persistent because Christ, Christ prayed uh, a persistent prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane just be, uh, when he was getting ready to give his life on Calvary's cross for our sins. So persistent prayer is in order, but Vain, empty repetitions or babbling is not, you know, it's what Christ is condemning here. And then it goes, it says, uh, but 
Be not ye therefore like unto them. Talking about the hypocrites, the scribes, and the Pharisees here who were doing these acts of drawing attention to themselves. Be not like them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. And so, you know, God knows our needs. God has promised to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. And so, even when we pray, God knows before we ask what we are in need of. But connecting with, and you might ask, ask why, why then should we, uh, Pray to God if he already knows what we need. Prayer is a way of developing uh, a relationship with God. The more we talk with God, the more we allow him into our lives and into our hearts, and we can share with him what's going on in our lives. This builds our, our relationship with God. The more we talk to him, the stronger our relationship becomes. And so we, we, wanna, we want to uh, 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 we wanna build a uh, relationship with God that's going to be solid and that, it, that's going to last. And the Bible tells us that, that we can come boldly before the throne of God to lay our petitions at his feet because of what Jesus Christ has already done for us on Calvary's cross. And, and, and God invites us to come to him in prayer. Keep that, that line of communication open with God. And, the, and then, like I said, the more we talk with him, and, and the better our relationship is going to be with him. And so we want to, to do the works of the ministry. We want to uh, help those in need and we want to have an active prayer life in, in order that God might get the glory out of what we do. Uh, and, and look, there's a reward. God has promised us that there's a reward when we do the things that he has called us to do, when we do it with a pure heart and not hypocritical. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your word that plainly shows us the way, the things that we should do. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. And we just uh, want to come to you with a pure heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you in our next session. So until then... May God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.